Welcome to Electron Line, and now we're going to prove Heron's formula. Remember, Heron's formula is a very interesting way of finding the area of a triangle, and maybe I shouldn't write A here. I should probably just write area so we don't confuse it with the angle A. So the area of a triangle is equal to the square root of S times the quantity S minus A, S minus B, S minus C and where S is half the perimeter of the triangle. So if all you know is the size A, B, and C, that's the area of the triangle. So how do we prove that that's even correct? Well, let's start out with the, the more fundamental way of finding the area of a triangle. We know that the area can also be expressed as being equals to one half the base times the height of the triangle. All right, so the base in this case, let's call it B, and the height would be H. So this would be equal to one half, uh, that would be B times H. Now H, if we look at this right triangle right here, notice that if we take the angle C, H is opposite the angle C, and A is the hypotenuse. So we can write H as being the hypotenuse times the sine of C, since H is opposite to the angle C. So this can be written as one half the base times H, and H would then be A times the sine of C. Oop. And I want to draw, make C a bigger letter so we can see that that's indeed the angle C. All right, now we're going to square both sides of that equation. And that's the beginning of the proof. How do we prove that? Well, let's square both sides. So area squared is equal to this squared, which would be 1 fourth B squared A squared times the sine square of C. Now, we have a trigonometric identity that says that the sine square of C plus the cosine square, square of C is equal to 1. Let me write that down right here. We know that the sine square of C plus the cosine square of C is equal to 1. So sine square of C can be written as 1 minus the cosine square of C. So if you've done a little bit of trigonometry, you're probably familiar with that rule. So we can say this is equal to 1 quarter B squared A squared times 1 minus the cosine squared of C. We can say, well, since that's the difference of two squares, we can write that as the following. We can say that the area squared is equal to 1 quarter, and I like to write A before B, so let's write A squared, B squared times 1 plus the cosine of C times 1 minus the cosine of C. So, so far, fairly straightforward. Now, can we write the cosine of C in a different way? Well, if we go back over here, we can look at it, and we can say that, um, okay, here I have to take a look at my notes a little bit. Ah, ah, what am I doing? Oh, yes, 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 of course. I forgot this part. Yeah, this is all about the law of cosines. All right, so at this point you may decide or start thinking, what does it have to do with the law of cosine? Well, the law of cosine is fundamental to this proof, and we'll see in just a moment why. So let's write down the law of cosine, so we can write that uh, c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared minus 2ab times the cosine of c. Ah, so notice we have a cosine of c here, and we have a cosine of c in there. So we can write the cosine of c in terms of a, b, and c. Remember, the area is always in terms of nothing but the sides and not the angle. So somehow we have to get rid of the cosine of C, and this is how we do that. So we can now say that the cosine of C is equal to C squared minus A squared minus B squared divided by minus 2AB. And if you don't like the minus sign, what we could do is we can put this on, on top and say this is equal to A squared plus B squared minus C squared divided by 2 a, B. So now we got rid of the minus sign. So if we take this equivalence of the cosine of C and plug it into our equation there, look what we get. But to make things a little bit simpler, why don't we work out the 1 plus the cosine of C first, and then 1 minus the cosine of C, and then plug it in so it will be cleaner algebraically. So 1 plus the cosine of C is equal to 1 plus A squared plus B squared minus C squared divided by 2AB. And then, to put it all over common denominator, we can put 2AB in here. So this can be written as 2AB plus A squared plus B squared minus C squared, all divided by 2AB. 
And then if you notice, in the numerator, we have a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Remember from algebra, that's equal to a plus b quantity squared. So what we can write here is that 1 plus the cosine of c can be written as uh, the quantity a plus b squared minus c squared all over 2ab. So now we can do the same but for 1 minus the cosine of c. So let's see here, so if we do that, 1 minus the cosine of c is equal to 1 minus, instead of plus, we get a minus, a squared plus b squared, oh, not plus, minus, minus c squared all over 2ab. And of course, oh, not all over, we're not quite there yet. Now we want to write it over a common denominator, so now we can write this is equal to 2ab minus a squared plus b squared, Oh, minus a squared minus b squared, let's do that. Minus b squared minus c squared all divided by. What we can now do is multiply, let's see, multiply the top and the bottom. We're going to need a negative in here. Multiply the top and the bottom by negative because we want this to be positive and that to be negative. So, okay, so this is, oh, this is going to be plus, sorry. I forgot to carry my negative all the way through. So this should be minus in front of the parentheses like this, so this applies to the a, the b, and the, and the c, so the signs change. All right, so to be able to see easier how we're going to uh, simplify that, we're going to temporarily change the signs in the numerator, change the sign in the denominator, so we're going to write this as 1 minus the cosine of c is equal to, um, change all the signs in the numerator, so we have a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. So what I've done is I made this a positive, that a positive, this a negative. Written it like this so you can easily see how to factor this. And then minus c squared. So I've changed all the signs in the numerator. I have to change the sign in the denominator, minus 2ab. So now we can write this as the quantity a minus b quantity squared minus c squared divided by minus 2ab. And then I'll reapply the negative sign to the numerator, switch everything around, and write this as c squared minus the quantity a minus b squared divided by 2ab. All right, so now I have an expression for 1 plus the cosine of c, 1 minus the cosine of c in terms of a, b, and c, and then I can plug it into the equation there. And I think now you can see where this is going. So now we can say that the area squared is equal to 1 quarter a squared b squared times, instead of 1 plus the cosine of c, we're going to write this right here. So we're going to write the quantity a plus b squared minus c squared all over 2ab. And instead of 1 minus the cos cosine of c right here, we're going to write that quantity right there. So we get um, c squared minus the quantity a minus b quantity squared all divided by 2ab. All right. Almost there. Notice we have an a, b in the denominator, an a, b in the denominator, and an a squared, b squared in the numerator here. So this cancels out that. And 1 over 4 times 1 over 2 times 1 over 2 is 1 over 16. So this now becomes the area squared is equal to 1 16th times the quantity a squared plus b squared minus c squared multiply times c squared minus the quantity a minus b quantity squared. Nope. Close parentheses. All right. Now you're probably wondering where this is going, but stay with me. We're almost there. Again, notice that this is the difference of squares and this is the difference of squares. So we can factor that. So let's do that. So we have the area squared is equal to, and I'm going to factor out the 1 quarter, the 1 half, the 1 half, which is 1 16th, times, since this is a difference of squares, and let me use brackets, I might make it a little bit easier, like so. So here we have a plus b minus c multiplied times a plus b plus c, right? So the difference of squares will be factored like this, times, and this is a difference of squares as well, so this is c minus a minus b times, and you know what, 
yeah, I'll just leave it like that, and C plus A minus B. So I did it like that, so and I'm closing the brackets. All right, now let's get those parentheses inside here so I can apply the negative in here, so the area squared is equal to, and now I'm going to also distribute the 1 16th. The 1 16th is 1 over 2 to the 4th power, so I can write this as a plus b minus c divided by 2, multiplied times a plus b plus c divided by 2, multiplied times c minus a plus b divided by 2, and finally we can write this as c plus a minus b whoop, divided by 2 like that. Use closing brackets. Again closer. Notice for one, here we have a plus b plus c divided by 2, and we define that here as the half the perimeter, right? So half the perimeter is equal to s. So this here can be replaced by s. Now somehow we have to have s minus a, s minus b, and s minus c. So what I could do, what I could do is I could add a c and subtract a c, of every one of these. So here, and there's a, that's a special trick here. So here we're going to go area squared is equal to, so here I'm going to go a plus b plus c minus 2c. Remember, if I add a c, I have to subtract a c. So I add a c and I subtract a c, all divided by 2. Multiply times, well, we're going to call this just simply s, which is one half the perimeter. So on this term, since I want an a plus b plus c, I'm going to have to add an a and subtract an a here. So here I'm going to add an a, so we have c plus a plus b, and since I add an a, I have to subtract an a, so I'm going to make this minus 2a, and divide the whole thing by 2 here. And then finally I'm doing the same here, but here I'm going to add a b and subtract a b, so this is going to be c plus a plus b, minus 2b all divided by 2 and close brackets all right now notice that a plus b plus c divided by 2 is equal to s that's our definition and if I take minus 2c divided by 2 I get minus c so this becomes area squared is equal to a plus b plus c divided by 2 which is s minus minus 2c divided by 2 is minus c. Here I have s, here a plus b plus c divided by 2, that is s, and minus 2a divided by 2 is minus a. And finally, c plus a plus b divided by 2, that's s, minus 2b divided by 2 is minus b. Close brackets. And finally, if I now take the square root of both sides, and I don't have a lot of board space left, so I better be finished by now. If I now take the square root of both sides and rearrange the terms just a little bit, I can now say that area is equal to the square root, and of course I have an S right here, times S minus A, times S minus B, times S minus C, and that ends up being Heron's rule. So you can see that with the use of the law of cosine and finding an expression for the 1 plus cosine c and 1 minus cosine c, we're actually able to take the traditional equation for the area of a triangle and turn it into the new equation where all you need to know is the sides a, b, and c, and using Heron's formula, we can then show you that those two are actually equivalent. Wow, not an easy proof, it's kind of complicated, and there's uh, several tricks involved, but if you just go through the process one step at a time, it's pretty amazing how somebody actually thought of that and figured this out.